Guys, what's up? It's Jeremy from Little Drummer Channel. I have got something cool to share with you all today. A uh, good friend of mine, some of y'all may know, AR Drummer. He is really into kind of uh, refurbishing uh, vintage and even some newer drums. Well, uh, recently acquired from him, uh, we've been working on a little thing together, mainly him, but uh, a 28 inch mid 1970s Ludwig marching bass drum conversion to kick drum. So we are going to have some fun today. I have still, if you can see this baby here, argh, it's huge, huge drum. Uh, we are going to uh, take off these old heads. We're going to put on some new ones and look at the size of this thing. Hello. Yeah, that's some big stuff, baby. So guys, thanks for visiting us and checking out this latest video. Um, those of you who are new to our channel, thanks for stopping by and we hope that you leave a comment, subscribe, uh, hopefully you find something here that you like. We've got over well over 100 videos uh we mainly like to play drums but uh every once in a while we'll do some uh, videos like this kind of doing some gear just updates on what we're doing here and just maybe some information that could be beneficial to you guys so uh good buddy of mine uh ar drummer he refurbishes uh, vintage drums and sometimes new drums and uh we took the old he took the old wrap off and basically put this new uh, vinyl uh, cloth wrap on and it really did a sweet job on it and I'll give you a closer look at this um, as we get into it and just kind of cleaned it up and you know uh, put these uh, spurs on it and uh, just got her ready for a kick drum application so what I got here what we're gonna work on today is we're gonna put on this uh, Power Stroke 3. I got a clear one that we're gonna put on there. I'm gonna try it. May ultimately end up doing a coated. We'll see. This is just for starters. We'll see how this goes. Look at this monster. Gosh. So, and then here is the other one, which I'm really a big fan of these uh, fiber skin. And this is again a Power Stroke. Uh, and as, if you can see over here on the Mapex uh, kit, that's what I've got on that, and that's pretty well what I use on all the Rezo heads. I just like the feel of it. I like the the solidness of the head. Kind of deadens it a little bit. You tune it pretty low, and it holds up nicely. But the cool thing about these two is they've got this nice extra uh, Mylar little baffling ring on the inside, and that's on both of them. Power strokes are kind of, they're all like that, even though they're makeup changes as far as if they're coated clear or if they're this fiber skin so there we go and what we're going to do is we are going to strip these babies off put these new ones on see if we can get her tuned up sounding good and uh we'll kind of get some uh some good audio for you and let you guys be the judge so let me know what you think and let's get rocking see ya Thank you. 
first phase of the test I think was pretty cool. Um, this was pretty well the least involved that I could do so far. All I've done is put the heads on. There's no baffling other than the Mylar rings on these Power Stroke 3s. Um, and that is on again on this uh, Rezo side and on the batter side. And um, so everything's wide open and it sounds huge, really huge, like I kind of thought it would. Um, very open sound, maybe perfect for what uh, some of you may be looking for. And some of you may be going, oh, well, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit boomier than I'd like. And uh, I get that. So that's why we're doing this. And it's a little boomier for my taste too, but for certain applications, it may be perfect. Like uh, for doing uh, soundtracks or something like that, putting some really big drums in there uh, with with a lot of sustain and, and so on. So there's definitely an application for it, but uh, we're gonna keep moving ahead. I want to point out a couple things real quick about the microphones here that we're using. And I actually am not using this one here. This is an AKG D112 body that has a custom uh, diaphragm that my uh, amazing genius dad made for me. Thank you, dad. And uh, this diaphragm failed probably about two or three years ago. <clears throat> and um, I've had this mic just to make a little testimony about it for gee whiz, probably over 20 years. And I mean, this thing has taken a ton of abuse. I mean, gigging, recording, studio, whatever. I mean, I've used the heck out of this thing and it finally just gave up. But just a little uh, information about this microphone here, um, which I'm not using. Uh, this, I could probably just pull this away. I'm just so used to having it here. I just uh, instinctively keep putting it back. But uh, the only one that we are using is this one right here. And this one is an AKG D112. Uh, so just wanted to clear that up in case you guys were like, why you got two mics on there? I only use this one for a sub kick when I'm recording, but I, I'm not using it for uh, this test for this uh, 28 inch drum. Um, one other thing, I believe the tuning for this is probably a bit low for my taste, but I'm gonna kind of approach that as uh, we go through this and make those modifications as we need to. For the next coming up phase, what I'm gonna do for this next round of test, I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna take off this head. <clears throat> I'm gonna put in a little bit of baffling and it's probably gonna be uh, before I cut on this thing or anything and put any port in it. I'm going to just put probably a small blanket in it and we're gonna see how that works. And I'll try to get the tuning fairly close, but I may, I may pitch it up just a little bit because it was pretty deep. Uh, but just to give you a heads up on what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna pull this thing out, make those changes, slap her back in there, and um, I'm gonna do a little time lapse so it uh, kinda, we get to the, the next, this part a little faster. But anyway, and the testing, of course, which is really what you came for. Uh, but thanks for hanging in there, guys. Let's keep rocking, and I'll see you in a minute. Peace.
So, where are we at? Um, I don't know about you all, but I thought that went pretty good. Uh, I had some fun. I played a little longer than I was going to, but um, I was kind of feeling kind of more in my element. I felt like the drum was responding a little bit better uh, with my foot and how I could groove a little bit uh, more typical to a smaller uh the response to a, a smaller kick drum for me anyway so i'm gonna probably hurt some feelings here because i'm gonna i'm gonna put a hole in this thing um i'm gonna use a tool that i've got uh let me grab it real quick no. okay i'm back so this little tool right here a lot of y'all probably seen these before but uh who, who does this uh Maybe it's called, the company may be called Bass Drum. I don't know. Uh, bass Drum Cutter. I, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not endorsing them. They're not, whatever. I'm just letting you know what I use. Uh, this thing, if you haven't used one of these, I would really urge you to try one. It is makes your life a lot easier <laughs> than trying to use a coffee can, which I've done a lot in the past you know when i was younger and so on came across this uh several years ago and have used it on any new you know if i'm going to put a port in a, in a bass drum head or something i use it all the time uh what i would recommend is if you do to use uh some type of softer surface like this um this is just like an athletic mat I just brought it in here and you'll see me lay it down. I just wanted to let you know what I was using for a surface to cut uh, because the carpet is a little bit too soft. For a thinner head, you can do that, but these fiber skins, they're a bit too thick and uh, you can't get uh, enough resistance, at least I can't, uh, with this cutting uh, a device on here for it to actually penetrate so ow it's sharp but um anyway let's see something else oh yeah you'll probably see me something i like to do is to make a little template real quick just to just to cut out and i'll typically hold it up and make sure that i'm looking like i got the right uh, diameter hole it's just something that i've come to do it, it takes like two seconds but sometimes it can save you a lot of headache Maybe you made the hole a uh, little bit too big or too small. Because I will tell you something about using this tool. You can't then go make it bigger. <laughs> if you make it a little bit too small, uh, I've tried it before and it will just drive you nuts trying to do it. Um, someone may have a, a way to do it. Maybe you can tape an old head onto the back and then try it and do it that way or whatever. But uh, what I've come to find out is it just it makes it more difficult to do. So make sure you get your size setting uh, right off the bat. It'll really uh, save you a little bit of a headache. So that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on. I am going to uh, pull this kick drum out and I'm going to take the head off. I will keep the blanket in and we will then have the port that I will then mic up. I was pretty happy with the tuning uh, on this last uh, little little trial. So uh, for me anyway, it was, it was feeling pretty good. I am actually feeling pretty good about how this is uh right now this was a pretty good uh change for me but i'm thinking sometimes i like having that uh slap of the beater on there that attack um, now you can do that two different ways some of you are going well why don't you put a mic on the front you can you can do that um, just make sure if you do that you have and you, and you use another mic you change your phases because otherwise you're really not doing anything good for yourself so uh but i'm gonna try to keep everything on this side and uh, i'm gonna go for the port and i'm gonna keep uh this uh, d112 uh one more thing i should have said and i haven't said yet is this is a 10 by 28 i uh, don't think that i said that yet but this is actually a 10 inch by 28 or 28 by 10 inch whatever however you want to say it but uh just so you got all the dimensions i'll have all that stuff in the description of this video as well as uh, 
AR Drummers Link, who uh, refurbished this drum for us, uh, which he did a great job. Uh, I will try to put links as uh, for the heads that we use. Uh, maybe I'll find this little uh, drum or bass drum cutter, bass drum hole cutter uh, link. Put that in there for you. And as always, uh, leave comments, uh, subscribe if you like what we're doing, and here we go. We're going on to phase three now. So I'm gonna pull her out, cut a hole, and then slap her back in, and, and see where we're at. So. Thanks guys, see you in a minute, thanks. made it to the end of our little uh, experiment uh, trying to see how we can best dial in this 28 inch by 10 inch mid 70s uh, Ludwig marching bass drum conversion to kick drum application for a set so uh, this if you made it this far rock on way to go <laughs> uh, this uh, approach that we've used 
is something that you can utilize also, not only with this massive kick drum that we've uh, converted into a kick drum today, uh, with the help of, again, AR Drummer. Thank you so much for your help, buddy. But you can use this approach uh, with any kick drum, you know, and, uh, you know, take some of these approaches and try them out for yourself. See if they may be helpful. Hopefully so. Uh, they've been very helpful for me over the years in uh, trying to, you know, get a kick drum ready for being versatile and, you know, being geared towards my personal uh, preference and taste. Uh, so what I feel ultimately I ended up with I feel like this was the best approach for me. Um, that is with the port, that is with the blanket, and that's pretty well it. I did on this last little uh, trial uh, playthrough, I did, a, if you were looking all the way through, I swapped the beaters. Uh, so I had the uh, soft beater and then I turned around for the, the hard beater, just to kind of give that uh, attack on the kick drum, just some differences so you could hear what that was. Um, I liked that, but they could both have their fit. Um, but I, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think it's been a cool experiment for me. I've wanted a 28 kick, 28-inch uh, kick drum for a while, and uh, this just worked out really great. To uh, I thought I was going to do it anyway, so I might as well make a video. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for making the trip with us and with me. And good to be with you through the whole time. And uh, if you got any questions, again, uh, feel free to leave a comment for us. Uh, reach out to us in some way. Uh, we've got over 100 videos on our channel. <clears throat> so hopefully maybe you find something uh, within some of the other content of the videos that we have that you may enjoy. Again, we mainly are geared toward just playing music for the joy and the fun of music and uh, just the love of it, man. And that's what fires me up about playing drums is just playing music. I mean, I like doing stuff like this. This is kind of some behind the scenes stuff that goes on, but um, it's just a blast and it's an honor to be able to share that with you and to share <clears throat> music with you as well. And uh, I'm gonna quit talking now. I do that too much, but uh, anyway, thanks for make, making the run with us and uh, hope to see you guys soon and uh, good luck with your own bass drums. This thing has been awesome. Thanks. See you guys. Be safe.